What would happen if you could stop worrying so much about what your team was doing all day and instead focus in on what you're supposed to be doing to move your business forward? Sounds like a dream, but right now you're living the nightmare of having to overcoach, overhandhold, and overcheck in on your team's work. Let's put an end to that and instead roll out super clear 5R work plans, drum beats, and more of my signature tools that drive accountability and self-sufficiency deep into your team. All you have to do is join a Leadership Lab program, and I'll help you turn your team troubles into triumphs. You'll be learning and growing alongside some peers that will become valuable business friends. So why not go beyond this podcast and join us? It could be the smartest thing you do this year. Book a call with me and see what program would best fit you over at the website, stackingyourteam.com slash programs. Hello, leader. Do you find yourself perplexed most days about the time and effort that you put into your team? It's okay. You're not alone. Often we think that when we select our very best candidates to start to stack a team of high-performing people, another bonus will be that they won't need us as much or at all. But being an absentee leader will only backfire on you. So in today's episode, I'm sharing some practical ways to lead and leverage all that brilliance that you've got on your team, because there's no guarantee that putting smart people together will create a smart team. And yeah, it's fall up here in Canada. Our beautiful trees in the forest are getting ready to drop their leaves. Hmm. But before they do, they're putting on a show of full-on crisp colors. The pool is closed and the patio furniture is back in the barn. And I'm admitting out loud to all of you that I'm not a fan of pumpkin spice lattes. But you go ahead and enjoy. Welcome to the Stacking Your Team podcast. If you are a service-based business owner who's wanting to elevate your capabilities to lead your team, you're in the right place. Clients tell me all the time that it's hard to find trainings and insight that fits them. That small business owner who's great at what she does, but never really had any training on the people side of running her business. That's exactly why Stacking Your Team was launched over three years ago as a companion resource to the award-winning Biz Chicks podcast, hosted by Natalie Ekdahl, our CEO and founder, who has been sharing her incredible free podcast resource for women entrepreneurs since 2014. Natalie and I both have a big heart for service-based business owners who are juggling life at home, in their community, their industry, and of course, in their business. We want to walk alongside you on that path towards profitability, impact, and harmony in such a way that you remain true to you. I'm your host, Shelley Warren, your team and leadership coach here at BizChicks Inc., where I lean on my 25 plus years experience leading people at a Fortune 50 corporation. I'm here to help you by taking those complex corporate concepts and stripping them down into what better fits you, that small business owner who wants to learn all the things about leading high-performing teams, being adored by your clients who will stick with you for years, and winning every day at Operational Excellence. Thank you for joining me, and as we come together today, as usual, when I mention an episode or a person or any little thing, you can always find the links in the show notes. And for our longstanding listeners, you know I can't start an episode without reminding you that the team that got you here may not be the team that will get you there. So you've got a team. I'm thrilled for you. And I'm also aware that sometimes you're in love with your team and other times you're not. Mm Mm-hmm. It can happen. So can you take in a big breath? And then can you agree with me that sometimes your team is in love with you and other times they're not? Mm Mm-hmm. This can happen too. So what's happening here? After all, if everyone is whip smart or the majority of the people surrounding you are, what could be triggering the fallout, even if it's a flip-flop scenario that's become normal at your workplace. You know, sometimes you're frustrated with them, sometimes they're frustrated with you. Sometimes neither you nor the team is even aware of these feelings. 
Could it be the same underlying frustrations that are the cause for both situations? Let's figure this out. I get it. You want more white space on your calendar, and you want help from the team to carry the load of the daily operation of your business. I applaud you for both of those goals. That's why I'm such a fan of CEOs introducing fundamental team and leadership tools into their business, along with introducing layers of leadership. It's how my one-to-one clients and leadership lab clients make such a transformation that has a delightful ripple effect right across the whole team and even into their own homes. But it's not as simple as just bringing the tools to the team and promoting people into leadership roles. You need a strategic plan and a way to stick to it and bring it to life and a team culture that matches your mission. That team culture would be built on an atmosphere of professionalism, accountability, and coaching conversations. You also can't abdicate your leadership responsibilities because your team is incredibly brilliant. So stop dreaming about that. I'm here to help you find some harmony in your life with a nice mix of team leadership time and time for you to lean into business development. So let's start with knowing that it begins with hiring right by attracting top talent with brilliant minds and extensive experience because those people will accelerate your goals. I mean, you've heard me harp on here on the podcast about no more mediocre team members. My clients certainly have. I want only the best for you. But how do you lead a team of smart people and do they require anything different? We're going to answer that question today and we're going to get clear on a few things too. First up, your team is more than a collection of brains that make stuff happen and that compounded brain power is not a set it and forget it kind of power. You know, like a set point gauge on a piece of equipment. Number two, If you and your team think that they don't have to learn anything now because you're all so incredibly smart in your individual expertise areas, well, I'm here to tell you, you're in trouble. And the third one, it's a doozy. Smart people, including you, are not always effective and therefore people are disappointed. And if that happens enough times, trust is broken. Sometimes taking a very long time to repair, if ever. So if everyone is so darn smart, Why aren't you winning at operational excellence and why are you not exceeding your goals? And why is it that sometimes people are miserable? Mm Mm-hmm, jeepers. Are you with me on this? Are you okay to dive into these three facts further? Then let's put on real pants and a real adult perspective and look deeper into what could be going on. I'm asking you to get ready to make some adjustments to your leadership style so that you can leverage all the brilliance that you have on your team instead of sabotaging it. Okay, the first fact to consider that I mentioned was your team is more than a collection of brains that make stuff happen and that compounded brain power is not a set it and forget it kind of power like a set point gauge on a piece of equipment. You know, a client recently said to me, they're all smart people. Why can't they figure this out on their own? What made this even more frustrating for her was that everyone was making a significant salary. These were not entry-level people with entry-level positions. They were a collection of seasoned team members and some newer people. Here's what we talked about during her strategy session. When people are reluctant to make a decision, fix a problem, or move forward to the next step, the underlying factor can be that they're afraid to make a mistake, or they don't know what to do that will meet your priorities and preferences because you've changed them so many times, or you didn't do a good job of clarifying the details, again, making them afraid to make a mistake. And if it's a group effort that you're expecting, a hurdle for them to get over could be that the team doesn't know who is supposed to be leading this effort and they're reluctant to appoint a lead person themselves. Or they're just uncomfortable sharing their insight because there's a real competitive vibe that's been brewing in your team culture. So what could that leader have done to spark the extended team to come together, collaborate, and feel great about leaning on each other to problem solve or execute on a goal? Well, with some newfound insight to not dwell on what's not working 
but rather disrupt the situation with a whole new approach, here's what's worked for her. She began by declaring out loud who the lead person was for the project, gave them clear outcomes, including describing what it will feel like for them when they've captured each other's expertise to make something great. She also tied in boundaries like timing and the intended new client experience and reinforced the expectation that an all-hands approach to this project will reduce the workload and help them all see each other in action, doing what each of them do best. Then she stepped back and let them lead. You see, she was great at attracting these people in the first place, and she'd become a little resentful of the fact that her leadership team didn't step up intuitively. They were stalled, waiting for direction and permission from her. She was frustrated, and they could tell, and yet no one felt confident to push back and come forward with any solution. You know, this is how so many teams' waterfall strategic plans spill over into the next month or even into the next quarter goals. Before you know it, key plans and projects continue to be in progress instead of complete and impacting the business. Your smart group of people need clearly defined decision spaces so that they can see and feel that it's their responsibility to take hold of the plans that are stuck, derailed, or spilling over and get things back on track rather than waiting for you, the CEO, to notice and then intervene. So what else happened with this CEO? Well, once she had reset her expectations and given clear ownership to each person for that portion of the project that they would lead, she also reinforced some boundaries and brought them into the picture, actually describing how life will be different. They all leaned in collaboratively. Then she was able to reduce the number of meetings she was attending and instead had the designated leader facilitate those meetings and provide a weekly summary. The summary triggered the CEO to provide coaching or attend a periodic meeting or simply be delighted at how the team was creating momentum for the project. And she was informed so that she could acknowledge the effort of her team members. So how about that second piece of facts that we need to consider when we put smart people together? Here it is. If you and your team think that they don't have to learn anything new because you're all incredibly smart in your areas of expertise, well, you're all in trouble. You see, ego is a funny thing. We've all got one. Some are louder and some are more obvious than others. And the ego can pull you into behavior that can feel righteous in the heat of the moment, and it can also feel terribly embarrassing afterwards, or even during the situation if you're confronted about it in real time. Leaders, please start reinforcing with your team that being a member of a whip-smart team can be an incredible experience for everyone to accelerate their learnings. The key is to never stop talking about how much of an advantage this is for everyone and never stop openly acknowledging great ideas, great follow through, and great innovation. I mean, come on, who doesn't owe a debt of gratitude to a peer who taught them something significant that they continue to use today? You know, back in my corporate career, it was an everyday occurrence to have clever people come up with ideas that improved outcomes, made life easier in terms of operations, and definitely impacted our ability to produce the volume of product that fed the supply chain. However, those clever people at times could be a bit much to handle due to the pressure that they lived with every day. Some of that pressure and stress was put upon them by the company maybe even me at times, and sometimes it was self-inflicted. Perfectionism, career ladder climbing, and ego could all play a role in how these people were feeling, and those feelings were directly linked to how they showed up and interacted with their peers and handled the unexpected. You know, many of my technical teams leapt over hurdles every day with problem solving and tempers could get hot and feelings could get burnt. As their leader, it was my job to defuse the hotheads, confront their behavior in such a way that they snapped out of it and shifted over into being a cool-headed expert instead. 
I did this most often by calling a timeout, pulling the team into a neutral space and giving everyone two minutes to state the rationale for the next best step. And singularly, asking for visible agreement to support the action step, including giving a hand up. Yeah, I was looking for more than the head nod. (laughs) I was looking for people to visibly say, I'm in it to win it with you. Of course, I also spent a lot of time, especially with new members of the team, hosting coaching conversations that zeroed in on behaviors that are helpful and behaviors that are hindering the person and our overall team performance. Candid feedback became normal, and soon team members were sharing it with each other, sometimes really effectively and sometimes not. Egos were still bruised sometimes, but, you know, together we were all getting better about levering each other's smarts instead of being jealous, intimidated, or reluctant to learn from each other. Which leads me to the third fact that I shared earlier. Here it is. Smart people, including you, are not always effective, and therefore people can be disappointed. And if this happens enough times, trust is broken, sometimes taking a very long time to repair, if ever. So what do you do when you have a group of smart people, but they're not as effective as you'd hoped? Well, most often, it's because their specific skill sets and the fire that lights up their creativity is not the skill set that the team needs to be organized or productive. I mean, sure, some teams look for experts to join their team who bring with them a passion for tools, systems, and processes. We all need those people on our team. But too often, experts enjoy doing things their way, and they can be reluctant to adopt a system or a new way of doing work. You've heard it before. They'll say things like, just let me do my own thing. I'll get it done. That attitude is not helpful for you or the team. And as the leader, you've got to step in and set the expectation that there will be no special treatment, no turning of the blind eye, and no forfeiting steps in the process because someone doesn't want to comply with the standards of operation. You know that you've got a mix of personalities who all have a preference for how they like to work and how they like to get things done. Some like their solo time and others can't stand to work alone. Some people are talkative, and others are thinking, keeping it all close to their chest. But we need a mix of people who can be flexible at different times throughout the day or the week and realize that there will be moments that their teams will rely on them and that they will have to lean into new approaches to get work done. And that's going to take learning some new skills. When we bring smart people together to form a team, a shred of early evidence that you'll want to watch out for is that not everyone can teach. It's a fact. Many experts are incredibly sound in their intellect, but cannot strip down a complex concept into bite-sized phrases for a learner. And this can be so frustrating for both the expert and the learner. I'm sure you can remember being taught something by a trainer who was going lightning fast, making everything look so easy, and you felt dumb for not being able to keep up. The trainer believes it's all so obvious, but it isn't to someone who's learning it for the first time. And adult learners require various forms of teaching styles and materials. So being smart isn't the end-all and the be-all for the trainer nor the learner. Consider who your best trainers are, applaud their ability to connect to learners, and then lean on them. And do you know who your go-to spreadsheet tracker and data mining experts are? Are you leveraging their enthusiasm for these tools? Are they helping their peers out in a jam or offering to create tools for the team so everyone works smarter, not harder? This is a clear way of demonstrating that rally for the team vibe that everyone enjoys. So why not spark this to happen this week? So here's the thing. You can't abdicate your leadership responsibilities because your team is incredibly brilliant. Your team members, just like any other team, are jostling for a position. Everyone is needing to feel like they have a place 
a known area of expertise, and a safe place to grow and refine their mastery even more. It helps to stabilize and encourage respect for one another with their teammates by giving the entire team a vision that capitalizes on their compounded experience with messaging such as, We can't all be experts in every aspect of the business, but we can deliberately foster a culture where talking about career aspirations is normal so that we can create opportunities to learn more, both from each other with the expertise we already have in-house and designing a hiring strategy that invites even more expertise to join us. Over time, it's our thirst for continual learning that will be one of our most competitive advantages that's not only going to be a benefit for our clients, but also for us individually. So as we close out for today, what will you do to apply what you just learned here on this episode about the nuances to consider when your team is packed with bright people and you want to leverage their brilliance to strengthen their capabilities even more, enabling you to step aside and let them lead? You know, at BizChicks, we have designed leads for specific areas of the business and the specific tools and systems that we use every day. That lead person is responsible for learning as much as she can, rolling it out with rationale and trainings, and being that Spock, that single point of contact for problem solving and strategy. She's also expected to know her numbers, know the impact, know the constraints, and host her own meetings with people that truly need to be there. You can do this too by singling out responsibilities, using the five-hour work plan, making it clear, and keeping everyone in their lane or in their zone of genius more often than not. And that's what makes our team effective and efficient. Natalie and the whole team rely on each other to do the right thing. We don't have to know everything about everything. We trust that the projects that are designated as priority are worthwhile. Sure, we look forward to those monthly updates and we openly cheer each other on and offer assistance in any way we can, but it's normal to trust each other's expertise and trust that each of us have the business, our clients, and the team's best interest at heart in everything that we do. This is especially important as all of us are now remote team members. So here's a suggestion for you. Grab your org chart and beside each person's name, Jot down what they lead in your business. Where do you rely on them? Because they have a unique skill set or work experience or even life experience. You'll soon realize who is not being utilized and who is being overloaded. You'll then want to make some adjustments. As well, get in the habit of deferring to your team members, especially teaching your whole team to call upon each other. Acknowledge it when you see respect and genuine appreciation being shared for each other. After all, that's the team culture that you're wanting to create, and it can be reinforced when your team witnesses each other in action, problem solving together instead of trying to hoard information, control the corner, or shine the spotlight on themselves. Every team is stronger, more agile, and better equipped for the future when they learn to celebrate the expertise that they have at their fingertips. There's a lot that goes into stacking a team where everyone is valued and where everyone can play to their strengths. To build that type of culture, you and your leadership team need to also factor in your team structure. Knowing who you are missing on the team, not only in terms of skills, but in terms of personality and life experiences, can really help you better stack your team. So finding these people starts with a job posting. One that you can revise to significantly attract whomever it is that's missing on your team. It can feel like a lot and where a lot can go wrong. So we've got you covered. In our digital course, Your Next Best Hire, we will take you from the moment you decide you need to hire right through to the first 30, 60, and 90 days of onboarding. And of course, in true BizChick style, we packed it full of videos, templates, checklists, scripts, and samples to save you time and boost your confidence as you take action to welcome your newest team member to come and join you. And by the way, we have six experts featured in the course, along with Natalie, Tiffany, and I. It was a real group effort, and we love bringing you some of our highly qualified connections to share their insight with you too. You can check out the course with the link that's in the show notes or by going to the website at bizchicks.com slash 
your next best hire. And remember, we spelled chicks here with an X. You know, leadership can be exciting, challenging, and lonely at times. So don't go it alone. Let me help you create the team and the leadership structure that you've been craving. So until next time, remember, if you have a dream, you need a team. So let's get stacking yours today. Today.